Hey coders, so you want to learn how to code, but you don't know where to start. Easy, Google how to start programming and then you see a gigantic list of programming languages. How overwhelming. What makes this even worse is that you have people in the comments and threads arguing over what you should and should not learn. Java is horrible for beginners. Python is so slow. Stay away. JavaScript is the ugliest language ever. You're not helping. Deciding what programming language to learn isn't an easy choice. But in this video, I will explain to you what programming language you should learn based off your interests. If you don't have a specific interest, well, hopefully this video will guide you in a specific direction so you can be an inspired coder. Let's start. Full stack web developer. If you want to become a full stack web developer, learn JavaScript. JavaScript is a rapidly evolving programming language for the front end and back end. So why JavaScript? How many times am I going to say that word? The browser only supports JavaScript when developing web applications or websites, so you really don't have a choice when it comes to JavaScript. The language has evolved a lot since its early days. JavaScript really glowed up. And in the back end, you also have Node.js, which has been around for a while. A lot of big applications use Node.js as the daily driver behind their software applications. If you're new, I highly recommend learning JavaScript because you can use it for the front end and back end. So there's less confusion between different languages on what side of the platform you're on. To be clear, you can use any language you want basically on the server, but that's what causes some slight confusion moving forward. When I started, I learned Python on the back end and JavaScript for the front end, which was awesome, but slowed down my growth a little bit. Learn from my mistakes, young Padawan. Data scientist. If you want to become a data scientist, learn Python. When it comes to the scientific computing industry, there are a lot of potential languages to learn like Python, SQL, R, Julia, and more. FYI, I know it could be SQL, but I'm just gonna say SQL because I'm a little bad boy like that. The internet is a warfare when it comes to this debate, so choose wisely. Out of all of them, I would heavily recommend Python because it is most versatile in other areas where things like Julia, R, or SQL won't be. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear me out. Data science is a very tough area to be in. Lots of math, lots of science, lots of brain activity you need. I don't have a lot of that in my head. So when it comes to working with a programming language, I would say to make it as easy as possible, and there really isn't any other language out there that is as readable as Python. If you get the Anaconda distribution of Python, then you get everything you need to do science with Python, like Jupyter, NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, and some other awesome, but tough stuff. Python is one of the most popular programming languages there is, so you get an extremely huge ecosystem that can advantage you as well. Like when you get stuck and have to go to Stack Overflow for the 100th time today. Again, this is no disrespect to any of the other languages on the list, apart from maybe you, SQL, because you violated me many times. Python is amazing for the scientific community and you can eventually go into other industries as well, but don't think that far ahead. Game development. Game development is a lucrative industry for developers because there's so many options. So in this case, I'm gonna give multiple options and then give my personal opinion. Remember, don't be mean. I know what you gamers are like. Realistically, you can build a game with any programming language and you'll see examples online where people build their own game engine from scratch using some strange programming language. I have mad respect to those programmers. I just couldn't do it. Two of the most popular game engines is Unity, which uses C Sharp and Unreal Engine, which uses C++. If you're an epic gamer, I know that term is a bit lame. Then you probably don't need a description of what each game nope. engine is like. But if I were to start from scratch, I would learn Unity with C Sharp. Stop booing me. The reason I choose Unity is mostly because of its development experience with C Sharp. C Sharp is a very popular and beginner friendly language that teaches you some advanced topics and programming while also being really easy to get involved at a beginner level. The Unity engine is also pretty good as well. Apart from a lot of random things being deprecated, like all the time. I would also like to say that if you're in the beginning stages of game development and learning programming, then making constant switches from Unreal to Unity to Godot to Lu Engine is what will cause learning fatigue. Learn one and then get good at it. Once you learn how to get good at one of these engines, you'll be able to easily switch from one to the other. Then you won't even need me anymore. But please keep in touch because I'll miss you. If you want to become a mobile app developer, learn Swift, 
or Kotlin. Swift for iOS and Kotlin for Android are the official programming languages used to develop applications for each platform. Duh, what other option would I even have then? Well, there are lots of options out there to develop mobile applications using different languages. I'm looking at you, JavaScript, thinking you can do everything over there. <laughs> Most programming languages have frameworks that will take code written in programming languages, compile it into Swift or Kotlin code, that can then be run on native devices. The biggest pro of this is usually you only need to learn one language, have one code base, and one easy deployment. However, there's a catch. You will see lots of companies and people later regretting this decision because they will need to fix bugs or add features that will require them digging into that deep, deep source code. When using Swift or Kotlin, you can get faster access to developer APIs that are released like AR, VR, and other cool stuff instead of waiting for a half-baked implementation. Native is much, much more powerful. Both languages from a syntax perspective are pretty similar, so eventually doing cross-platform development would work, but I would stick to one platform specifically first. IoT. If you want to get into the Internet of Things industry, learn Python, or C, but choose wisely. What's great with Python in this circumstance is that it allows you to do things that would generally take a while to program pretty fast. There are frameworks that you can use that will be the glue between Python and your IoT device. Of course, if you're really getting deep into the hardware of the IoT devices, then it might make sense to learn C, which means you need to do a lot of the heavy lifting yourself. But if you're already good at C, then you probably already clicked off this video. Now, usually hardware like Raspberry Pis or Arduinos are just the half the equation in IoT. You usually have some sort of cloud application on the back end that it connects to. I like Python in this instance because you can use an AWS serverless function with another service to easily glue all the pieces together. <laughs> Why am I saying glue so much? Take into consideration that a lot of these IoT devices, especially modern ones, have some sort of web interface that you can interact with, which you would need JavaScript to learn. But I am staying here with Python because you can just use some sort of no-code or low-code service to do that for work for you. If you like robots and want to build your own robots, learn C or C++. C++ is one of the fastest programming languages because of its design and systems programming. Of course, when we are talking about robotics, we're talking about manipulating computers and microcomputers at a very, very low level. Similar to IoT devices, you can use Python to build a little robot that can drive around your house or something small. But when it comes to robotics development, a deep understanding of computing really is needed and will take you a long way. Now, there are some more competitors coming on the scene when it comes to low-level embedded languages, most specifically Rust. Rust is such an amazing developer experience that developers have ranked it being the most loved language many times on the Stack Overflow developer survey. Now, if you're from the future and this is past Lewis speaking, then the answer might have changed. But for now, 2022 at least, C++ is the best way to get into robotics and probably the smartest way. Backend engineer. If you want to be a back-end engineer, choose any general-purpose programming languages. Here are five. Python. I know, I know, I'm clearly a huge fan. Python because of its versatility, ecosystem, and ease of use. Java. For its maturity in the industry and its large ecosystem of existing packages. Go. For its speed, ease of use, and strong security. JavaScript. Go back to the full stack spot to understand completely. C++. Because of how powerful it can be. If you want a more detailed step-by-step -step way of becoming a back-end engineer, I have a video of my channel showing you step-by-step -step the path that you should take to become that. That being said, being a back-end engineer means you're most likely going to run server-side code. So if you want to be a back-end engineer, try and look into further niches within this to truly focus on what's the best programming language for you. All the programming languages I mentioned above will 95% solve the use case that you need for it. So pick one, stop moving around, and get good. Front-end engineer. If you want to become a front-end engineer, learn JavaScript. JavaScript is the language of the web and is continuously evolving at a very, very fast pace. It overwhelms me. Now, if you're looking to start developing user interfaces and experiences, you will 100% need to learn how a website is marked up with HTML and CSS. So learn that first, but eventually you'll need to get your hands dirty with JavaScript. In the JavaScript ecosystem, you'll find lots of ways that you can get carried away with it. 
Should you learn React, TypeScript, Ember, Angular, Svelte, Next.js, Gatsby, Webpack, Bower, ugh, and the list goes on and on and on. My advice specifically to this is to learn vanilla JavaScript and then figure out where you need to go afterwards. You can build lots of amazing things with JavaScript without the need of any third-party technology. Again, shameless plug, but I have a whole video on how to become a front-end developer in a detailed roadmap. So go check it out if you want. DevOps and cybersecurity. If you want to get into the world of cybersecurity, learn at least one general purpose programming language to understand how programs can be vulnerable and how they can be solved or exploited. I would refer back to the backend engineer section of this video to understand what programming language works for you. The reason there isn't a specific language is because as a cybersecurity expert, you'll be working with lots of different types of applications built with many different frameworks on different types of machines. Similarly speaking, in DevOps, you'll want to learn one general purpose programming language to help the understanding of the CI CD pipeline and other DevOps related tasks. Take into consideration that DevOps and cybersecurity are not really too heavily in the programming side of things. It's great to have programming experience, but don't feel like you need to know every single language in order to get into it. If you could take one thing away from this video is that learning one programming language and getting good at it will help you so much in your career, no matter which way you decide to go. Being a programmer isn't about what programming language you know, it's more about how you can use a programming language to solve what you need to do. Make a commitment to yourself to learn one programming language and get good at it. At a beginner level, you'll 100% be able to build the apps that you want to build. Thanks for watching, like, comment, and subscribe for more content. What's your interest in tech?